All right. We're coming down to the wire with uh, Movember, and thank you very much for everyone who's been donating. Um, I've got two more things coming up. One is an interview with John Lee, which I'm really excited about. But uh, tonight, I'm talking about brain spotting. This is um, a therapy technique that was invented by David Grant. Uh, I had the pleasure of um, training um, in Australia with uh, Dr. Robbie Abels. Robbie's uh, been someone who's actually digging up, I think my first ever, um, my first ever training with Mr, with Miss uh, Abel's, where was it, here, here we go, my first ever training, Robbie, if you uh, ever tune into these things, I think I got from you, uh, David Grant was an EMDR specialist, and um, his story is in this book, and um, he uh, he tells a great uh, a story in in brain spotting about how he attended a conference uh, in uh, Jerusalem with um, Peter Levine, and Peter Levine is a somatic expression uh, therapist, and um, uh, you know really works uh, with a technique very gently about um, about getting the, the how the, the trauma stores itself, as Pia Melody also said in the eighties about how trauma stores itself in the body. And we need to sort of get it out and so many different sort of techniques um, have sort of developed and bounced out of, of this idea of the trauma storing itself in the body and and um, David tells his story about how in a Peter Levine workshop uh, he asked for a volunteer and he quickly raised his hand and it's what I think I, I love about people like David um, is that we're always learning you know if you're in this field and you think you know it all you're in big trouble I think and um, David went up there and he had a real physical experience in regards to Peter's technique, very gentle. And then he said he was there to, to, to deal and teach, you know, an, a, you know, an EMDR workshop. And um, Peter said it's a great technique and, and um, but then warned him of the, the fact that sometimes it's too great and it's too, um, it can actually re-traumatize sometimes, folks. And that the idea is, um, you know, I was read down a quote before, that slow is fast and fast is slow. You know, that um, sometimes in trauma treatment where we um, are needing to move more subtly. I was in a group the other night with some men and um, there was a man there that was very distressed. And um, uh, it sort of gone real quiet and stayed quiet for a while. And uh, I could see people in the group wanting him to push past this resistance. And... One thing I've learned about um, the defense mechanisms um, and trauma is that, that we only go to them when we actually need to feel safe. And um, I've really learned to be much gentler now when I'm with people that need to be safe and just allow them to be right there where they're at and be in that place with us in company. One of the things that um, is very complimentary in, in this, in this um, uh, model is is how uh, David very much um, draws on the interpersonal neurobiology, the, the, the school of thought where, that has pulled together so many great therapists that are working holistically. He makes the point that, you know, once upon a time, to say that you were an eclectic therapist <clears throat> usually meant that you hadn't really studied something properly. But these days, um, it, it, it really is a reflection that, that essentially the, the client is the expert and that we're there to... Um, stay in relationship and, and, and the, the, the word is attuned. If my nervous system is meant to be in a mindful presence with, 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 with um, whomever I'm working with. The, the thing that's interesting about brain spotting and where it's a paradigm shift in therapy is lots of folks come to, to, uh, to a brain spotting session because they've heard that it deals with the midbrain, the subcortical brain. They've generally been in therapy for a long time and still have the same symptoms of post-traumatic stress. Um, what this does is it turns, it turns therapy on its head and essentially the, the, the client is the center of attention, in, in David's words, the comet. And then the therapist has to get in behind the comet. And that's where the attunement and the, uh, the particular attention needing to be paid to the client leads the way. They're the expert on what's happening for them. 
Well, when he developed this, he tells the story about developing it with an ice skater that had a particular block around a certain move. And they'd had some real success with the EMDR, but, but on, on, on an occasion in working with her, he'd realized she wasn't tracking the EMDR sort of very well. So he slowed it right down and started to pick up anomalies in the optical sort of eye. And Stephen Porches talks about the upper mammalian vagal system where, where it's a social engagement system. And, and, and she noticed that, 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 that there was a particular anomaly there. And, and essentially what it is, it's the beginning of a, either a flickering or a jerking um, of that part of the body. I'm not going to tell that story. This, that stuff's all in here. What, what, what happened after that was that he was able to stay with that spot. And essentially it was the beginning of um, the outside window of brain spotting where he said for you know the first sort of six months of doing it and teaching other people to do it, that, that essentially the therapist was guiding it. And, and, and looking for those anomalies. But, but eventually the inside window, the second technique developed, which was where the client said, no, 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 stop, stop, go back a little bit. Now, essentially what it is, um, if I had to, I was trying to think, how can I share this and make it useful? So first thing I'm gonna say, well, what's a brain spot? It's not a spot in our brain. The, the definition I wanna give you is a brain spot is the brain's response to focused activation combined with a designated eye position. A brain spot is not a single spot in the brain. It is a network of activation in the brain, which is reflected in the body with somatic activation. So essentially you work with the client to go, well, what, what is it that you want to work on? And like a lot of body focused tra tra trauma therapies, try and take it back to the most developmental representation of that. So it might be that a person has recently broken up in a relationship, but they were adopted when they were five and never saw their, their parents again. And, and it might be that you go back to that activation point of the memory of the adoption, but work with what the client presents. And um, what you're looking for is them to get an image of that, but just enough of an image to activate this somatic reaction. And then, then the next bit is to get a, a, a SUDS reading, a subjective units of distress reading, so you can sort of gauge it. Pierre Melody makes the point that with codependency, we're very, very, very poor um, judges because we minimize the effects of recovery. So we're not, it's, it's good to have a SUDS score where you say, well, this is, I'm activated, it feels like about a 7 out of 10. 10 being I'm out of my mind with fear, this is about a 7. And then as you go through this process, you, you find this particular place, and there's a bunch of different techniques with, with brain spotting, but, but if I just say use the, the um, outside window, as you're sort of tracking, and then how you do this, I've got my small pointer here, I've got a couple of pointers, but um, what you do is you, you use this particular um, device to help the client. So essentially, if this camera was the, the person I was working with, I'd be sitting across from and asking them to stay nose to nose. Probably wouldn't have my Movember cap on, folks. But I'd say nose to nose, and then I would open up this point and we would move it and we would track. So essentially, you would very, very, very slowly track across their vision. And they keep nose to nose, but their eyes go on very, very slowly. And it's the tracking of this point of when you notice either a flickering um, uh, or, or, or it can be um, a very, very powerful somatic reaction. I've worked with a few folks now that go into jerking. Now, one of the things that David said he was impacted by was um, uh, when Peter Levine was at the conference, he showed him. It's a very good documentary. It's on YouTube um, of a polar bear that was... Um, and, um, uh, being worked on uh, by some, uh, I'm going to can't think of technical words tonight. Never been a strong point, but it was the polar bear was being tagged, so they had to uh, put an anaesthetic or anaesthetize it or knock it out. But essentially, not knock it out completely, just just to tranquilize its body. There you go. And um, at the end, after it's being tranquilized, because of course it's awake, you can see what's happening, people are approaching it, it's perceiving threat, they, they, it doesn't know that it's there to help them. Anyway, long story short, when, when they realize, the bear realizes that they're not in threat, but the body could not shake it out because it's been, um, uh, it's been tranquilized. When it shakes off the tranquilizer, it literally goes into violent shaking. And this is what can happen sometimes in that activation point. Um, is that sometimes it can be a tick can develop. I've worked with people where a tick has developed and they're really frightened. They don't want it to come back. They think, oh my God, I worked years to get rid of that. 
but essentially what you do you go to what they call a squeezed lemon zero where you try you you work by sitting in that activation point and very much being present as the therapist Dan Siegel has a, a concept called the triangular human experience and he says there's the hardware of the brain there's our mind the energy and flow and then there's relationship and I think that triangle is acutely active in brain spotting because the job of the therapist is to sort of get in behind the client stay present uh, either guide or be guided by because inside window means the client will tell you exactly where to put this uh, I've done uh, a session with Robbie uh, on my own trauma and we didn't even need the pointer because we went to gay spotting. I was talking to and, talk and looking at a particular spot and we just stayed right there. So you sort of get in behind it, the client. And, the and then as that activation moves, you follow the client wherever they go. Um, what's hard and it's been hard for me I'm a talk therapist I'm a CBT trained therapist so it's um, to to stay out of conversation allow the client to guide it if they need to speak we speak but but generally there can be long periods of silence as they stay in that somatic activation and allow it to reduce the thing that's interesting is uh, uh, I, uh, I, I I've seen people start to work through um, issues that have bothered them the whole life. I've been surprised by clients as I've learnt this technique in the last year um, that I've worked with over years go to a place I hadn't seen them. They're told stories that have never come up uh, but we start using this technique and all of a sudden they're, they're, they've got some of those lost memories. Um, and not things that they, 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 they couldn't remember at all but things that they just never bought out in therapy. They seem so far back. And start to see them really move and nearly shake it out through the body. Um, I've got a lot more to learn. Um, but there's some really good uh, therapists out there that do brain spotting. I'd like to think I'm going to be in that category. And I certainly do it now. If you're interested, please personal message me. Anyone out there with complex post-traumatic stress or post-traumatic stress disorder that lives in the horror of that untreated, please reach out. If I'm not that person for you, there'll be someone out there in your area that, that knows how to work with trauma at this subcortical level where we can reduce um, the activation in the body so you can um, get some freedom from this. Um, a lot of the themes of, uh, of um, Movember is about men dying too young. And it's not just veterans. There's so much developmental trauma and so much socialization for men that we just don't get into our bodies. There's a beautiful song by the Canadian artist Bruce Coburn and it's just a simple line, it's nearly a throwaway, but he, he sings this line that when I was young I learned not to trust in my body and it happens for a lot of men. So when that body, when that implicit memory, when that trauma comes up, it just feels unbearable, catastrophic, eternal, and sometimes suicide feels like the, the only way out. If you are in that, please reach out tonight. Call men's line, lifeline, call any line. Talk to anyone. Just get through that moment and then please get help. So um, look up brain spotting. Um, Dr. Robbie Abels is the Australian trainer with uh, Selene Souza and, um, and they uh, are training people all around the country. Um, it's one of those sort of revolutions that happens in therapy every so often. It was like when all of them broke away from from Freud and, and started carving you know, uh, their own way. And I think this is what's happening is people at the moment are excited. You know, the trauma release exercises, radical exposure therapy, the tapping solutions, the 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 um, um, somatic experiencing EMDR try it try it try it get amongst it we're, we're trying to get to the midbrain and we're trying to get to deep healing um i've got a couple of days to go please i uh, hope you um uh, donate and if not to me someone doing this this uh, uh, this a worthy cause november and i look forward to talking to john lee next bye <laughs>